What is up, everybody? I believe I'm live. Double check real fast. Yes, I am. All right, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? Um, let's get started tonight. Um, we are going to be going over the three pillars to running a successful electronics reselling business. All right, what's up, guys? So I'm going to wait a couple minutes for uh, some people to hop in. Um, to the live. Um, if anybody has any questions or, um, or anything that they want to ask, go right ahead. Um, first of all, I want to start off with a couple of wins this uh, today. Um, drop your wins below, guys. Who bought items this week? Who sold items this week? Uh, just today, I actually bought two phones, um, and I bought one yesterday. I bought an uh, iPhone X, 256 gigabytes yet today, a Pro Max 256 gigabyte. Um, I'll make $280 off of this one because it ended up being 256 instead of um, instead of uh, 64. And then I bought an S10 Plus yesterday. So I want to know you guys wins. You know, I shared a little bit of mine. Um, I shipped out quite a few. I shipped out six phones this morning. So. Share your wins below, guys. Share me what you guys picked up. Share with me what you guys picked up. Um, whenever you share your wins, you are more than likely going to make more. You're going to do more, and you're going to be a lot more confident um, whenever you're sharing them. So um, even if you are watching this live later on, share your wins below. I always love it when people share their wins. That's great. And if you're on with me tonight, go ahead and type live. In the comments below, I want to know who I'm talking to. Um, and if you're new, definitely type new. You can type live and new at the same time if you're brand new to all this stuff. I'd love to hear from you. I want to know who I'm talking to um, because tonight is going to be a good one. This is going to be one of my pillar content uh, Facebook live streams. So it's going to be uh, forever ingrained into the units of this group. So... Cool, we got some people saying live, perfect, 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 love it. Live and brand spanking new, love it, Devin, perfect. All right, so let me go ahead and prepare a little bit before we get totally started. I gotta get my stuff up. And I got a new document coming out soon, guys. So um, I think you guys are really gonna like that. And I'll be showing a little bit of it here tonight, a little bit of the back office stuff that I got going on. So let's get started. Perfect. Got a bunch of people on tonight, 13 people so far, expecting more. So, all right. So the three pillars to running a successful electronics reselling business. Can anybody take a guess on what they are? Go ahead and just type in the three things that you think they are, and then we will get into it. You know, I want to see what everybody thinks and then what it actually is. See, this was confirmed by, um, you know, David, Aaron, and I um, for, you know, local resellers and stuff like that, um, what, what the three most important things for them are. So I'd love to hear what you guys think those three pillars are, and, and then we'll jump into it. Still got a couple more people hopping on, perfect. Marketing, negotiation, and the third, I don't know. Isnan says, I bought an 11 Pro Max today. Me too, man. <laughs> I bought one today as well. <laughs> the one I bought, uh, I thought it was 64 gigabyte. That's how I appraised it. Um, and it ended up being 256 gigabytes. And now I'm going to make a lot more. So I'll make about $280 in profit off of that one iPhone X I bought earlier, I'll make about $70 in profit. Um, so not a bad day. Um, Michael says ads, consistency, not sure on the third. Michael says listing. Um, leads, negotiation, ads, close. No, aren't close. That was really close. That was actually pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek on something that another document that I got coming out that I think will help you guys out. 
So let's go ahead and check that out. So this document is going to be called the ultimate guide to growing your electronics reselling business. All right, as you can see, I got a little introduction here. Um, and the three pillars here are posting ads, appraising items, and negotiating. So these are going to be the three pillars or they are the three pillars of a successful electronics reselling business. Now this document isn't fully done. I'm giving you guys a little sneak peek before it comes out, um, but I will be going over everything tonight. And this document will be accompanying this video in the units. So it's definitely gonna be there for you guys to use um, and to learn from and, and different things like that, okay? So the first one here, obviously posting ads is obviously number one, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. So who here posts their ads every single day? Type a one in the comments if you do, or, and type a two if you don't. Who here at least, you know, posts 10 ads a day? Type one if you do that, type two if you don't. I wanna know how many people are actually posting ads and how many people aren't because um, posting ads is the, uh, it's kind of the lifeblood of your business. Matthew says two. Um, ads are number one, right? I primarily run Facebook ads, so um, it's different. You know, I still post ads, but I, I post less, but I, I spend a lot on ads. I spend about $40 a day on paid advertising um, because that's the way I like it and it, it makes everything easier for me. All right, so we got a lot of twos. A lot of people, I, personally, I have about 30 different ads running at all times. Um, and then I got free ads on top of that as well. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of ads out there in the market, guys. So the lifeblood of a reselling electronics business is posting ads, getting people to come to you, getting known in the market. Um, that is the I mean, you can reach out to people. It takes a lot, a lot more effort that way, right? So in the little document we have here, as you can see down here in posting ads, um, as you can see, pillar one, posting ads, getting seen in the market. So obviously, you know, the main, the mainstream trend when it comes to reselling right now is, you know, going to garage sales, reaching out to people or searching for hours a day online, you know, going on a Mercari, you know, different things like that. And it just doesn't work out. You know, it becomes more of a, a time sucker than anything. Um, obviously, we think this is a little bit silly, you know, but, you know, people do it. It's cool, but it's just easier to post ads and have people to come to you. So I said right here, it makes sense if you're building a business where you buy and resell all sorts of things. And that is fine. You know, if you resell shoes, phones, uh, magazines, cards, and different things like that, yeah, go out and do your thing. You know, um, we think it's um, important to focus on one area. Um, so th that's what we do. Me, Aaron, and David in the phone flipping program, that's exactly what we teach. We focus on one area and one industry, and that is one, they sell incredibly fast, and two, they're incredibly profitable, and three, they're never really going away. So um, naturally, I just kind of went over a little bit of this. Um, you know, when you're reselling, you're just kind of DMing people all the time whenever you're trying to go to places like that. So we found that by posting ads on places like Craigslist, Craig, uh, Facebook groups, or even running Facebook ads, um, some people run ads on the apps. Um, people reach out to us whenever we do that. You know, we don't have to go out and find people to, to buy items from. That's not what we want to do because that takes too much time. You know, it sets apart everything we do. We run ads and we run a lot of them, uh, which directs people directly to our either our Facebook profile or our business page, um, any way that they can contact us, right? So here is something interesting too. So you've probably seen ads in your market for buying electronics. And if you haven't, then you need to be posting ads because you probably don't have any competition. And there's probably a bunch of people in your local area looking to sell items. So if you're not constantly seeing ads 
for people who want who are buying items, then you probably don't have any competition in your area. Okay. Um, this is kind of just talking about paid advertising. Um, I spend at least a thousand dollars a month just on paid advertising. I'm looking to increase that to two thousand um, in the next month. So you know, because typically whenever I run paid ads, I get a I, I typically get a five x return. You know, a lot of people don't, but they also don't follow up. So, and as you can see, I'm not completely done with this yet. So obviously pillar number two is appraising items. Um, so let's do a little appraisal drill real quick. Um, just to kind of help you guys out with the whole appraisal thing. Um, let me see, what phone do I have here? All right, everybody open your eBay apps and get ready. All right, here we go. No, not that one. Let's do, there we go, S10 Plus. All right, got an S10 Plus right here. It is with Verizon. It is a bad ESN. What would you pay for it? And what would you sell it for? Uh, Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, Verizon, bad ESN. What would you buy it for and what would it sell for? Go ahead and give me your guys appraisals. Um, this is an appraisal drill. This is exactly what you need to do, right? Now, when you're appraising, you need to be able to do it in under a minute because let me, let me explain something. So the faster you can give an appraisal, the more confidence it's going to give the seller, right? So if, if it takes um, somebody, you know, five minutes to give an appraisal on an item that there's no, they're not going to be very um, confident in selling to you. Right. Because you kept, you kept them on the phone for five minutes, right. Even for three minutes. Right. So you need to get so good at your appraisals that you can do them in less than a minute or less than 30 seconds. If you can do it one in less than 10 seconds, you're going to start buying items like crazy. Okay. If you take too long, to make an appraisal either either over the phone or through text message, people just, they're not gonna have as much confidence in you to sell to you, okay? I, it sounds kind of paradoxical, but that's what it is, okay? The faster you make an offer, the more likely you're gonna close the deal, okay? So for example, for, um, for this Pro Max that I bought today, I can actually show you guys um, the message. No way it gives you guys, and you guys can see how quickly I make the appraisal. Okay, let's hop in, make show you guys the appraisal real fast. Oh, oh yeah, here it is. <laughs> it's still open. Uh, where'd it go? Um. Where here, Kevin? There we go. All right, so let's see. So I bought this Pro Max for four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, as you can see, um, is it still available? iPhone Eleven Pro Max for sale. Any issues with it? No, not at all. Uh, ready to sell now. What company is it with? AT and T. Okay, cool. I can buy it for four hundred. Let me know. Can you do 500? Is the phone paid off? That's just another thing that I use, right? Um, it wasn't paid off whenever we met. So I actually, I still bought it for 450 because I was going to make a killing off of it. Um, anyway, it's that quick. You know, how many messages here? One, two, three. On the third message, I made an offer. Third message. I got all the information that I needed and I made an offer on the third message. I didn't ask for the gigabyte. I didn't ask for anything that, you know, um, anything crazy. I didn't ask for the IMEI number, which a lot of people do. If you're asking for the IMEI number, when you're, before you make the offer, you're going to lose the deal like 50% of the time. I'm just going to tell you guys that right away. Now I'm going to, I know I'm going to get some people that are like, well, what if the phone is stolen? 95% of phones aren't going to be stolen guys. And if you bring up the bill of sale, it's going to be even less people. Okay. So it's stop 
asking for the I and the I number and losing deals because you're going to lose deals that way. It happens every time. The only time I ask for an IMEI number is when I need to know if the phone has an iCloud account on it and the screen is dead or, you know, some other weird thing. You know, if, if I'm in the middle of a negotiation and I can't close them and I need to know if the phone is paid off to make a better offer, that's when I ask for the IMEI number to help them out, right? Because they're invested in the conversation at that point, right? So you only ever ask for that if they're, you know, at least 10 messages deep, because that means they're invested, right? Other, it, anything other than that, you want to get them an offer as fast as possible, you know, within two to three messages easily. Does anybody have any questions? Bring them on. We're on the second part, second pillar of, uh, which is appraising. So we've gone through ad posting. That is pillar number one. You need to be posting ads every single day, or at least running Facebook ads every single day. Um, pillar two is appraisal, um, how to appraise items correctly and make an offer on them as fast as possible. Um, so yeah, and uh, let me know if this guy, this is helping you guys. Um, am I providing value? If I'm providing value, just type value in the comments below. Um, and then, yeah. Okay, so Eastnon has a question. How can you tell if a phone is paid off? Okay, so there's a couple different ways. Um, for example, um, why am I frozen? Oh no, what happened? Okay, there we go. So um, the, the phone that I bought today was AT&T. Um, one way that you can check is by going to, if it's with AT&T, you can go to the AT&T device unlock um, website. So you just go to your browser on your phone or your computer or something. You just type in, what's going on here? You're going to type in AT&T device unlock. So this is for AT&T only. Okay. And then I'll show you guys some other ways, um, to know if they're paid off. All right, unlock a phone or device. All right, so you're gonna end up on this screen here. And this is typically only for AT&T. And by the way, sometimes this doesn't always work. So I always recommend, you know, making an offer based on bad ESN. And I don't know why this is taking so long to load. Um, anyway, Matthew has a question. I got a guy with a T-Mobile XR replacement device. I don't feel comfortable buying it or making an offer, feel like it's an insurance deal, thoughts? Um, it's not our place, Matthew, to, um, to assume. So I would just say buy it as bad ESN. That's what I would do. If it gets blacklisted, then, I mean, then it gets blacklisted, I mean, it happens. Usually direct buyers don't really care about that. So anyway. Um, so you can check AT&T devices by using the AT&T device unlock portal and you just type, check no, type in the IMEI number here, do the robot thing and then this. And then if it, if it allows you to go through, it, you can click next. Um, once you do that, it will tell you if the device has a balance or not. If it, if it doesn't tell you it has a balance, then you're pretty much good to go and try to unlock the device, right, which makes it worth more. What about if you have to drive 40 minutes away, you don't need the IMEI? Uh, I don't drive 40 minutes away. So everybody comes to me. I do not drive to people. I will not do it because it's, it's a waste of my time. Um, if they want, look, it, look at it this way. So they need the money, right? So if they need the money that bad, they're going to drive to you, right? So now it's your job to get across the point to them that they're coming to you. Now, how do you do that, right? Well, you just tell them. So for example, um, if I hop back into the messages here, hold on, let me hop back in. I'll tell you guys, I'll show you guys exactly what I've done for the people I've closed in the past few days. 
Um, Facebook. I tell people that I'm meeting them at a certain place at a certain time and I send them the address and I, I ask them which time is best for you. I don't even give them the option to ask if they'll come to them because I'm not going to. I mean, that's not what I do. Um, I do not drive to people, guys. I mean, if you want to drive to people, you can. Um, I've just found that no-shows are hella worse when you drive to people. So, um, all right, so here we go. All right, so I can do 450. I'll be, look, I just said it. I'll be meeting people at the McAllister's on Dowling and Beaumont at 4 p.m. today if you want to sell it then. And then, you know, I didn't even, you know, and then he just said, okay. And then I just said, awesome, when you come, please be able to sign out of your iCloud account so we can reset the phone, bring a valid ID for the bill of sale. That's it, can't wait during your business. Sent him the address and I let him know, hey, I'm only going to be here until 4.30. Then he asked me if I was there. Not yet, then he was on his way, then he showed up. Okay, so it's it's good to give people a time limit on when you're leaving as well, because it makes them hurry up. Um, I tell people I'm only gonna be there until 12.30 or 4.30. And if they don't show up, then I'm leaving and they can reschedule for tomorrow. I don't, I don't care, <laughs> you know? Um, it's the way I do business. Um, I'm, I'm pretty guarded when it comes to my time. I got two kids now. You know, I, I want to be home. You know, I don't want to be out, you know, buying phones all day. Um, I don't want a job, which is what that would be if I was driving around all day. My time is important, right? So guard your time, make people meet you, you know, just be confident about it. You know, just, hey, I'm meeting at this location at this time, which time works for you, right? All right, so we kind of went off on a little rabbit hole there. Um, so the second pillar is appraisals. <laughs> um, all right, and third pillar is negotiation. So negotiation is a pretty big part of all of this, right? So um, I typically, if I have to negotiate down quite a bit, typically what I'll do is I will use David Kosciuszko's um, price rebuttal sheet, which I'll show you guys right now. Let me go ahead and show you guys that. And if you want it, you know, just buy the program. <laughs> um, let me see if I can get into my, I'll just go to the course. Let's see. Um, what the heck is it? Phone. Oh, wait, who sent it to me? I'll show you guys exactly what I use. Uh, what is it? Course flip flip phones for oops flip phones for profit .com. Um, what is it? Member there it is. Member sign in and member login. Dang it! It's the wrong one. Sorry. If you guys got any questions, you can go ahead and ask them while I'm figuring this. I don't know why I can't remember the whole thing. Profit.com. Number sign in, I think that's it. All right, so log into my account here real quick. Oh, what? Oh, that's weird. Okay. I got deleted from it. Pierre is on. Heck yeah. What's up, Pierre? Glad to have everybody on. Um, we are going over the three pillars for running a successful reselling business, which is important. Why is it taking so long? All 
Ah, what the heck? Ah, click funnels must be down or something. Oh, what's going on? All right, well, maybe I can find it in my Google Drive real quick. Actually, you know what? I'll I'll show you guys the one that I kind of created. It'll probably help you out a little bit. Um, it's actually in the goal setting guide as well. If you got the goal setting guide, then you'll already have the thing that I'm about to show you. But negotiation is obviously a big part of this whole business. You know, if you can't negotiate, you know, if you can't take a no um, multiple times, then you're not going to do very well, right? So, oh, actually, here's David's um, thing. I'll just show this to you guys. This is in the phone flipping. Oh, wait, that's not right. All right, so this is actually the um, objections. Um, common objections and how to respond. This is the objection and rebuttal guide that is in the phone flipping program. Um, and it's pretty easy. So typically what I do is that copy and paste it, right? So I totally understand, unfortunately. So let's kind of walk through this a little bit. So this is in the program. Um, you can get this along with, you know, the appraisal sheet to make things pretty easy. If you're interested in the program, just type program below and I'll reach out to you after this call. We'll see about getting you started. Um, but this makes everything incredibly easy, right? So common objections and how to respond. Obviously the seller responds with an angry no to your offer. Example, hell no. Um, a good response to that would be, um, I totally understand. How much were you looking to get, right? So um, example, I want 300 for my iPhone 6. Nicely ignore so I like how he says this, nicely ignore the price they want and offer them a low price regardless, okay? So a good response to this would be, I totally understand. And unfortunately I can't pay that, pay a hundred dollars because of where it's at in the market, but I can pay you know, this amount um, and I can pay cash today. How does that sound, right? If you already made the offer, you could respond with, I totally understand. Have you tried selling it on your own yet? Guys, this is a big question right here. So I totally understand. Have you tried selling it on your own yet? That's a huge question because typically they're gonna say no because they already reached out to you, right? If they're reaching out to you, typically they're not trying to sell it for themselves. So um, if they respond with no, um, you, know, you can respond with $300 is higher than we could typically sell it for. So that would be, a a tough, tough to match. I would be happy to give you, you know, the amount you want, um, though, and it could give you cash today. Does that work? Uh, the seller says they will just sell it themselves, you know. Um, $300. So, and this is true. Usually the seller is bluffing because he wouldn't have even reached out if he was going to sell it, if they were going to sell it themselves, right? Um, you know, uh, seller says someone else offered them a better price. First check to make sure your appraisal is accurate and offer is, the, is reasonable. Um, another guy offered me 150. Good response. 150 is a great price. You know, I'm not sure how he was able to offer that. And, and if he is willing to pay with pay it, I would definitely go for it. I would be happy to offer you $100 for it and give you the cash today. What works best for you? So this is called calling the bluff, right? You're calling their bluff at this point. Um, say, you know, somebody else offered them a certain amount. And uh, that's typically what I do too. If somebody tells me that somebody offered them $1,000 for their Pro Max, I'd be like, dude, take it. Like, what are you waiting for? Why are you even talking to me? Take that offer. Like, I'm not going to try and, you know, um, bring them down on that offer because I know they're lying to me. You know, to everybody, like if somebody says, 
for example, somebody's going to pay $400 for an iPhone 7 Plus, you know they're lying. Like, so just say something like this. $400 is a great price. I'm not sure how he was able to offer that, but if he's willing to pay it, go for it, you know? Um, here's some good responses. Would that work for you? Is that, would that price be fair? Um, and then, you know, just kind of some other stuff, extra stuff, right? So this is uh, one, this is David's. Um, it's great. I copy it, you know, it's exactly what I use. Um, I created one a while ago. We jump into that one a little bit and I'll kind of go over a little bit. So negotiation is huge, guys. It's big. You know, um, you need to be good at it, um, especially, you know, in the beginning. Well, you don't need to be good. In the beginning, all you need to focus on is getting leads. The negotiation skills will come later. A good book that I recommend actually for negotiation skills is Never Splitting the Difference by Chris Voss. He was a um, he was a um, like a counter terrorist negotiator. It was a great book. All right, so um, this is one that I created a while back. It's got some notes to the side. It's not super great, but it's okay, right? It doesn't work as well as Dave's, so I don't really use it. But you guys might be able to take something out of this, um, and it might help you, right? So. Uh, for example, my example, number one was the person who just needs money, you know, how is this available? Yes. Did you have a phone you were looking to sell? Yes. Seven plus great. Any problems with it? No, it's in good condition. It's always been in the case. Um, great. I can pay 150 for it. Okay. Where can we meet now? This, this is the person who, um, you know, just needs the money. So they're not going to, um, you know, they're not really going to rebuttal give you a rebuttal on that, right? So, um, and over here, I put a note to the side. Notice here that I did, I did not ask for the gigabyte size or any other questions about the phone. I just assumed and appraised it as a Sprint Bat ESN. That's still all that I do typically, guys. I typically appraise everything as a Bat ESN. Now, if it's a newer phone, you know, I might give them the benefit of the doubt and ask them what company it's with, but that's the, the extent that I'm gonna ask, right? All right, so my example number two is the person who thinks they know how much the phone is worth, right? So, hi, is this available? Yes, did you have a phone you were looking to sell? It's seven plus, um, great, any problems with it? No, it's brand new. Wow, that's great. Does it still have the box and plastic and everything on it? So this question right here, guys, is very important. Whenever they say, no, it's brand new, you wanna ask something like, I asked the question that they knew the answer to. It makes them question the worth of their phone. Why does this happen? So their phone is not going to be still in the box and is not going to have the plastic on it most of the time. It's going to be used, right? So as you can see right here, um, no, but it's been in a case. So it's not brand new. We know that, right? So it's just getting them to admit that to themselves that is not a brand new phone, okay? And then it uh, goes in, you know, like, great, I can offer 150 for it. No, thank you. If you don't mind me asking, what kind of price were you looking to get? So I got a little note over here. Even after you get the first rejection, stay in the conversation. The question puts pressure on them. At least 350, it's in really good condition. Now, this is kind of old, guys. Seven pluses aren't worth that much anymore. Um, so I jump in with, my second question here. So this is, I like to call these like my four bullets, right? Um, so they want 350. Okay, what company is it with Sprint? And how many gigabytes does it have? 128. Great, I can offer $180 for it. Too low, I totally understand. What kind of price would you accept if I was able to bring cash to you right now? They said $300. Now this is also based off of a real conversation that I had a long time ago, but. Um, it's a great phone. And this is Aaron Goldstein's line, by the way, if you guys know who Aaron Goldstein is. Um, it's a great phone, but as a reseller, I can't pay that much for it. I buy and resell items so I can make a profit. I'm sure you can understand that. I understand, but I don't want to sell it for 180. It's almost brand new. Um, I understand you want the best price for your item. Um, oh, well, let me go to this note right here. I explain what I do to them. People understand when another person is trying to make some money. This is important. 
Now, a lot of people in this industry think it's a bad thing that we tell people that we are, we are resellers and that's not true, okay? So people know that pe other people are trying to make money, okay? Um, and they almost know that you're a reseller, okay? I mean, they're gonna ask whenever they meet up anyway, right? So I just, I'm upfront about it, you know? I'm trying to make money, this is my hustle, you know? This is what I wanna do. So um, then down here, I understand you want the best price for your item and that's completely fair. Let me ask you one question though. Would you rather have money today or in a few days? As a business, you wouldn't have to worry about me not showing up to meet you or meeting you in some unsafe area. I would really like to earn your business today. Um, I guess I can do that, you know. All right, so this over here, level with them, but then create a scenario that might happen if they try to sell the phone to someone who is a complete stranger. People would rather sell an item to a business than to a regular person because of the safety it provides. Also really do try to earn their business, okay? And then we got people who have what I like to call the golden nugget syndrome, okay? Um, they know, they think their phone is a block of gold, okay? So as you can see, this is a general conversation. Um, no thanks too low, if you don't mind me asking. You know, how much were you looking to get? 450, I paid $700 for it two years ago. It's a great phone, but as a reseller, I can't pay that much for it. I buy and resell items so I can make a profit. I'm sure you can understand that. I understand that. See, like these people aren't gonna go down in price and that's fine, right? You'd actually need to get on the phone with them to negotiate, to make it, to even try and put a dent in it. But most of the time it's not even worth it. Um, this is a tactic that I used to use in the past quite a bit. The price is a bit steep for me to make a profit on. Tell you what, though, there is a company in the area that buys phones like these. I do business with them sometimes, Bell Electronics, phone number, give them a call. That's my business, right? So um, that's a trick that I used to use quite a bit. I mean, you can use it if you want. Just get them on the phone. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things. Um, I would refer them to myself, right? Um, probably not the, the best thing to do, but it worked. So. There was actually one time where I had like four different cell phone numbers in the area with you know, all my ads and I was getting calls from the same three people, <laughs> but I don't do that anymore. Um, I just stick with the one phone number now. Um, what was this valuable for you guys? I don't know. I feel my throat is kind of dry. So I've been talking a lot. Um, do you guys have any questions? Um, those were the three pillars. Um, this, this live has a lot of value in it, guys. Um, ad posting, um, being able to appraise stuff. And then the negotiation I went very, very in depth with. I don't even know if I'm allowed to share that appraisal and rebuttal sheet. I might be hearing from Dave later, but we'll see. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, just let me know by type and value. Um, the way I know, right? All right. We've got a whole lot of people left on. That's okay. What time is it? I got about 20 minutes left. It might be stopping a little early tonight. I see a lot of people hopping off, and that's okay because I went over most of the stuff I needed to go over with anyway. So I'm going to open up the floor to general question and answer. Um, if you guys got questions, now is the time to uh, ask. You know, you can ask stuff about Bad ESN. You can ask stuff. I don't know what kind of books I read. I don't, I don't know. Whatever you want to ask. Um, how I value the phones. I, I don't know. I'm just going to open up the floor to people. Let them ask their questions. Um, yeah. If you're just now hopping on, um, then, uh, what we went over tonight, um, was the three pillars of a successful electronics reselling business. And what those three pillars were, were, uh, posting ads, being able to appraise correctly and, um, negotiation. And there will be an accompanying guide to this whenever I finish it up, which will be this week sometime. And it'll be put in the units along with this video to help you guys out, to help you guys get started. Um, if anybody on is um, on this live now or later, you can type in the comments below 
Um, if you're interested in the phone flipping program, you, all you need to do is type program below in the comments and I'll be able to reach out to you based on that comment because I will get notified um, and we can definitely get you guys rolling. Um, I'm doing really well, really fast. Um, we got quite a few people. I guess I can show you guys the, <clears throat> the Facebook group when it comes to the paid members. So we got a lot of value in our paid uh, members Facebook group. Let me log into that real fast, show you guys. Uh, we got me in it. You know, I'm the marketing coach, the head marketing coach. We got Aaron, who's the uh, head um, coach for the phone flipping program. And then obviously we got David Kozesko, who um, is course creator and, and one of the head coaches as well. Show you guys and give you guys a little sneak peek. Oh, my iPhone 7 just sold on Swap. Made some money. Let's see. Oops. All right. So here is the members only Facebook group. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek on what we got going on in here. I'll load a little bit. So this um, programs group, this is a this is the phone flipping program group, um, as it says for course members only. Um, there's over fourteen hundred people in this group. Um, we do the group chat lives every Tuesday. So there will be one tomorrow night. And then obviously uh, you have people who are asking questions, you know, course members in here asking questions. Um, you got me, I was on last night. I was showing people how to run Facebook ads for items other than phones. Um, so, and I was answering questions and stuff um, as I am, you know, I'm the head marketing coach. So that's what I do, right? And then, I'll have to reply to that later. <laughs> so as you can see, you know, this is some stuff that I bought the other day that I shared in the group. Um, this is one of our newest members, Emil, asking a question, you know, and people are answering his questions, right? Um, here's somebody who's having some major success in the group. Um, obviously making some real good money there. So um, here's Sam, one of the moderators in the group, $725 in sales, $280, $280 in profit. Um, we got RJ. He's one of my clients or was one of my clients and he's killing it, making money here. Um, we got Felden, of course. <laughs> um, so there is, you know, there's a lot of potential in this group and here's our head coach, Aaron Goldstein. Um, he is very good at negotiation and he hops on every now and then to help the members out by answering their questions. I'll give you guys a little taste of what he, uh, he does here. Real, real time, most relevant, most recent. So these are the type of questions that people ask, right? Um, your text negotiation videos have drastically increased my closing rate. Austin Hicks is brand new to this group, guys. Um, he's freaking killing it. He's going to hit $10,000 in his first month in sales. So it's fantastic. Once again, if you're interested in the program, type program in the comments below, and we'll see about get, see if you uh, qualify to join this awesome number of people. Like I said, Austin Hicks just joined this group less than three weeks ago. He joined the program less than three weeks ago, and he's freaking a total of $865 in profit. You know, these people in this group are freaking killing it, guys. Like, you know, making money, right? So that's what it's all about. So if you guys got any more questions, go ahead and ask below. Um, I'd love to see what kind of questions you guys have to ask. Um, like I said, if you're interested in the phone flipping program, definitely reach out to me. Um, type program in the comments below, and we'll talk about getting you started. See if you qualify and grow your business at an exponential rate. Right. So that's what it's all about. I bought two phones today, made over $300 in profit. I see we got Mr. Alex Trejo 
on the live tonight, Mr. Bill Flipper Bill of Sale himself. I had him on last week. Um, very, very important. Um, bill of Sale is huge. Um, I use the Flipper Bill of Sale myself. Um, I actually do what Alex says. I got it on my iPad. And it makes my life super, super easy. Um, let me just show you guys real quick, actually. So I got a little broken pad. And this is, as you can see, the little dots there, the PDFs, those are bill of sales. They're all on my iPad. So it's pretty cool. And I can export those and I can use them phone numbers for retargeting ads. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Oh, I want to go over a little bit. Um, I noticed a lot of people didn't hop on the group stuff the other day. The thing that I talked, I hopped, I hopped on live last night, yesterday, middle of the day. Um, I want to go over a little bit of the units that I have in my Facebook group. That way, to give you guys the most value, right? Um, if you're not ready for the phone flipping program yet, then I highly recommend going here, right? So units that on the mobile, it'll be at the top when you go to the group. Um, as you can see here, there are units. Um, there's a bunch of them. All of these are live streams. So how to start a reselling business with low capital. I'll wait for this to load. So here we go. You know, as you can see, and guys, don't, something that, that is uh, really important, whenever you watch these lives, right, what you need to do here is go here and click. You can actually see the comments in real time. Um, to see what people are saying and what people are asking, what kind of questions they're asking and stuff. So you go over here, you click real time comments, and it'll what is up, guys? And it'll show the comments as they come in on the video during real time. That way, it kind of helps you uh, answer because there's a lot of comments in these. Okay, there's a lot of good questions in these. So definitely check out the comments on these videos because people are asking very very good questions in these. Um, as you can see, how to appraise items or what kind of offers to make, how to negotiate items at a price that you want. Um, so all of this is really good stuff um, for you guys to learn, right? Units are big. And I, and, um, I don't know, this may not be here in the future, guys, but we also got this negotiation room here. So if you scroll down in the group a little bit, you should be able to see it. Um, I actually sent out an email about it earlier today. <clears throat> but I created a, a negotiation room and what you guys can do with that is you can tag somebody that you want to negotiate with and um, get them to get in that room. And it's a, it's like a FaceTime thing. You know, you can hop in there and start negotiating with people. Okay. Um, it's pretty cool. See right here. Um, you can hop in there. All you do is join the room and um, just join the room and start negotiating with somebody. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Um, I highly recommend people do this. You know, being able to practice mock negotiations is important. It's something that I did in the very beginning. I actually negotiated back and forth with my wife. Um, it works out really well, guys. Mock negotiation is huge. Um, so I think that's really all I have for tonight. Um, I went over a lot. Um, I hope I hope this stuff helps you guys. I know we went over the three pillars. And then I kind of jumped into a little bit of the program to share with you guys a little bit on um, the negotiation room and the units. So I think that about sums up tonight. That was a lot of stuff. Um, and I hope that you guys get a lot of value out of this. And I hope you guys make a ton of money off of the tips, off of these live streams. Um, anyway, guys, I will see you guys next Monday. I'm out for the night. And I will talk to you guys later and see you in the group. Bye, guys.